That's as if. Basically, I call these my black ninjas because you can swing them real fast and they're black. And <laughs> so the point is, is that you can, you, you, won't, you can only swing a regular bat maybe 30, 40 times and you're like, your elbows are sore and everything, right? You can swing these indefinitely, right? And you can work on stuff. The swing, there's movements, there's steps in a dance, okay? If I saw your swing right today, I would say your bat speed is slow. Okay? But you don't... Hitting... See, I never thought about hitting with high bat speed. I, it, never came, it never even occurred to me when I was playing to have good bat speed. Because my thought was, I'm going to compress that ball. I'm going to compress it. I'm going to lean on it and compress it. I'm not just going to swing at it like it's a pinata. You know what I mean? And so what happens is, is that you have very little directional force, okay? It takes 8,000 pounds per square inch to hit a ball 400 feet. 8,000 pounds in one direction, like a hammer. Bam, one direction. And I'm sure you, you generate that much force, but maybe on any given, if, maybe on the right pitch you could do, you, you, you can get it going in one direction, but the majority of the time it's going, I mean, how much, what do you weigh? Uh, 185. And you're what, six foot? Six foot. Okay. Six foot 180. Guys at the pro level, six foot 180 hit at 500 feet, and you're hitting at 350, 60, 70, 80, 390. There's a reason, okay? You, can, you have 80 feet in you in the, within the next six months. You just got to know what to do. You tell me you're not as explosive and you couldn't scrap with a guy your same size, 10 years older? You could, you know, you, you, especially if you kind of knew what you were doing, yeah. right? And, and you're more flexible, too. You wouldn't get hurt. Yeah. You just don't know how to generate your forces in the right direction. So the first thing, the first, the first idea is, is that, for example, my hips are my base, my knees, my feet, my core is my motor, and my arms are my swing levers. So watch. So, so when I go like this, my motor is right here. Now, the reason why I'm doing this analogy, okay? okay would it, Would it make, make sense, sense to swing, swing with this plane? plane? See, when, See, when the, the motor, motor did this, this would it make sense, sense to go... go no. you, you see how my swing is not, not congruent with the direction of my, my core motor? Okay. Just not. So what you need to do is you need to learn how to swing in the same direction as your core motor. The same angle, too. And then what happens is, and, and little kind of funny things happen, and I'm just going to throw this out here kind of as random, you know, like you say, well, what about the, doesn't the barrel have to drop? Because my illustration here is a flat swing, okay? Yeah. Well, you know, bats are at all different angles, but so is your rotation. So, for example, the strongest feeling that you would have is barrel above the hands. Yeah. This is strong, like sledgehammer strong, right? Okay, now watch this, though. Bar barrel above my hands is my strength. So right now, that's a flat swing. If I continue, you draw a line through my shoulders, my swing would be under my shoulder line. Okay? See that? And I'll show you on video. Is, is the barrel of my bat above my hands? And like, this is a line? Well, just what do you see? I see it below your hand. You it Still here. Okay. See, I think you already intuitively knew that. This is why I know that you, that you have the potential to be in... See, everyone's so afraid of being... of analytically understanding it. 
you take what you, because either way, if, you're, if, if you don't even know what you're doing, you still use your analytics, whatever it is, even if it's wrong. It's probably wrong if you're not that smart, right? So when you struggle, what do you do? You go back to whatever you think you know, and then you work on those steps, and then you kind of sum it up into one feel, and, and that's what your approach is. Your approach is the summed up thing that you do to, to sum everything up into one feel so that when you swing, maybe it's your grip, or you know, you know how we cycle through those feelings of, okay, I got hit three weeks ago when I did this, and then I did that. It's like we cycle yeah, through these things to try to find our, our hot thing. Yeah. But we're cycling through something that... We're not starting from the same place every time because we don't totally understand the movements. It's like playing chess and, and, and there's a horse or, or the knight that goes up one, two, and over either, you, you, um, either direction. So one day we have a great game and we go, one, two, here. Oh, man, I'm hot. I'm going to be hot for the rest of my life. I know exactly what I did. I know the feel. I know how to replicate it. And I'm going to have a great game tomorrow, the next week. But tomorrow comes and you're standing here. And you go, one, two, here. And you're like, shoot, where the heck am I, you know? And you're completely in a different place. So what you need to do is understand what the steps are. And then very quickly, using a Black Ninja, my guys from Major League players on down have a two to three minute routine that they do at home, at the hotel or wherever. You know, they do their blocking drill, whatever it is, and do all their swinging drills. They do their circles or whatever they're going to do. And they do it in two or three minutes, and then they go, okay, my movements are correct today. I'm not leaking. I'm not doing anything wrong. So during that time, they can think, see? Because they, they're not at the ballpark. Then they go to the ballpark, and you use your, your transitional thing is, okay, now flips or, you know. Now, now you're kind of looking for your approach. You're kind of looking for the feel that's going to sum, sum it up, okay? And then there's just little fine-tuned adjustments from there. But what if those little movements that you're working on are completely wrong? Then you're like not even in the right place mindset. You're completely in the wrong place. Big league guys are, are great at adapting. And that's why there are some times when players at that level even have the wrong mindset. And it takes them a long time to figure out how, how to do their fine tuning, even though they're really good at it. It's because they're in, they're, they're in no man's land. And they'll, crazy enough, is they'll figure something out that makes it work. But, but that's a skill that takes a lot of time to develop. In your case, as you're growing up, and I'm telling you, it kept me from hitting, you know, another couple hundred home runs at the big league level, you know. Um, at the big league level, I hit 136. I could easily hit 300 home runs if I would have understood what I was doing. In a couple things, about 9 out of 12 things, I, I absolutely was right. But looking back, I go, you know, there was a, there was a series where in a six-week period, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the game, okay? In a six-week period at home, so that was three weeks at home, in seven of, of those games, I hit two home runs. It, it's a record held from Babe Ruth, uh, Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle, uh, uh, Reggie Jackson, another guy, Jason Jambi, me, me and Jason Jambi, and one other guy, okay? The, the point is, is that I, in a, in a three-week period, I had 14 home runs in seven of the games, but I was in more slumps in that same period of time than probably ever was in my life. Now, how can that be? Well, I'll just tell you what I was going through. I, when I was locked, I felt like I could hit a ball right at my face, and so I just literally put everything right here. Okay? Well, when I was fresh, wham, and I hit it, and I keep it fair, so fair. I mean, I don't care if it was right at me, I hit fair, right? And so what would happen was, is when I'd get tired from catching, then all of a sudden I'd go, you know, you know I'd, I'd swing once and it was a little rough. And you know how it is. Eight, eighth inning, your swing's a little rough. And then I'd start to think, okay, this is how I like to stand. How in the heck do I get my bat to there? <laughs> you know, i start thinking about it. And then I'd go back to what, okay, well, how do you do it? Well, you'd think, okay, I remember when I was young, you'd go like that and get it there. That's the worst thing you could ever do. What if a, what if a hammer thrower were to go shoo, and throw it, and right before they threw it, they went, they went they'd lose, create slack in that red. They'd lose all their power. In the second section of the women's 100 meter hurdles in lane two. And so hold your hand. Okay, now watch. 
Now, theoretically, let's say the plate is right here. Okay. Okay. So, you don't bring your hands inside the ball. That creates slack. Okay. Guys do it all the time. Guys, as a matter of fact, you could do such a good job at that drill that you could theoretically, and guys come to me all the time with this problem. They literally can't hit. They'll go 10 balls in a row. They can't even hit it because they do so good at doing this that they swing and miss. That's maybe that they, they, it's like they make that their approach and then they can't even hit the ball. Hands inside the ball is a combination of head position, which I will go into and getting your weight into it. When you get your weight into it, your bat's in lag. So watch what happens. Use your other arm. Okay, so that, so that would be a ball right at me, right? Okay. Most guys at the big league level, if, if they start, their, their hands are outside the ball and they make no attempt to get it inside the ball. Because you don't want to change its path. Here, if I transfer, wham! Because I'm making a, like an oval around my body and I'm just swinging. Most people think hitting through the ball means instead of swinging around your body like this, they think it's some sort of swing it outside of your body, which is what you do a little bit. Okay, so that's another thing that you do. Instead of literally just swinging around your body and hold your hand out like this, which you, you learned this when you were younger, head in the fire, swing across your face, hold your posture. Hitting through the ball means swinging across my face. How much more can I hit through the ball? Now, really, I'm swinging around my body. I'm not trying to go out anywhere. Now, watch. How much more can I hit through it than this? Like if the ball was there, here, 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 watch. Here, 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 I could hit all these balls. All the way to there. Yeah. How much more do I need to hit through it than this? Okay, if the ball's inside, right? Now, technically, if the ball's inside, I'm going to try to hit it in that direction, so hold it there, right? So if the ball's there, now watch. How much more do I need to hit through it than that? And I'm not swinging out. I'm swinging around my body. Now, you add a weight shift, and the bat's in lag, see? When you shift your weight, the bat's in lag. When you quit... When you stop, then the hands fire, and what are you doing? You're not hitting it with your weight, you're swinging it with your arms. So if I shift and stop my weight, which is called quitting, so if I go and stop, which is what most players do, a good way to look at it is like a pole vault. Guys run in the pole vault, it lands. When it lands, what does it do? It bends, right? It bends, but it's, but it's also trying to get straight, right? So it's bending to absorb the running energy, the linear energy, right? It's absorbing, and then, it and then it straightens out. Same with the front leg. Front leg, you've got to land bend, or you can't transfer your weight into it. Because if I land straight, I'm stuck. I mean, that'd be like taking, if I were to grab a, there was a truck line up here and a truck here. I'm taking bags of cement, and I was going here to here. Well, if I went from here and then straightened my leg, be stuck right now the technical reason why this is get straight you don't this would not the straight front leg would not be an approach thought you'd be all screwed up because you go like that and then you're stuck right because you would post out and you'd never be able to hit a ball beyond the perfect ball like on a tee if it was one inch further you'd be just like that but if but if it was bent see you could keep going and hit it see okay so now watch why the knee straightens out the knee doesn't get straight I'm sorry, the knee doesn't straighten, it gets straight. The back foot doesn't turn, it gets turned. I take the bag of cement, now there's a truck behind me. Here, turn. Now once the core turns far enough, it's going to turn my hips, as they're flexible. And then, it's gonna, then my hip's going to get too far from my foot, it's going to straighten out. So the reason why it, it straightens out, it starts bent. And then it... It goes here, then it flexes back again because, you know, there's that tension. Guys get that confused from guys landing like this, thinking, well, isn't that collapsing? Well, no. Well, no. Neither would a pole vault bend and collapse. It's la you're landing here, you just don't get past your foot. You know, you're landing there so that you can get your weight into it, okay? And then as you rotate, it'll straighten out, okay? All right. So the first thing what we got to do here is we got to flatten out your swing. Okay, right. I'm not about to tell you how to do something. You know what I'm saying? I have to let you do everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you something, a movement to try that you'll only be able to do it the right way. And then I get my job done just because you won't be able to do it any other way. Okay? So, so basically what we're going to do is I want you to, I'm just going to 
sit here. I want you to stand, like spread out a little bit so you, so you have a nice wide base. And I want you to lock your hips and lock your feet and don't transfer nothing. All you get to move is your arm and shoulder, okay? And you get to swing and all you get to do is this. You gotta get bat speed. Now, if you don't swing on the plane that I'm swinging, you won't be able to have any bat speed. You know what I mean? It just won't be. So you, you'll literally learn how to get it by just go, I can't do that. I gotta, okay? Now, you remember hands inside the ball? No, you, you know what? I'm gonna, I, I'd rather let you fail so you feel the experience of it. So go ahead and just swing. See, you went like that. Big problem. Keep going. Okay, faster. Faster. Okay, now look sideways right here and swing. Go ahead. Okay, now go ahead and turn your shoulder more. Like turn, your shoulder can turn. Your, your core gets to turn. Okay, but your hips don't. So, but it's, you know, start here, get some rhythm, go like that. Go. Good. Now, See, your angle, your swing angle, is this direction. So now, talking about approach, think in your mind, like if you were out in the woods and you were going to chop a tree, you wouldn't have to get up the tree and go, okay, well, see, what did I do yesterday? <laughs> just grab the dang axe and you just start hacking. And okay, I've just done a bunch of up chops. Now it needs some down chops. Oh, I can't do that. My swing is this way. Just do it, okay? Swing in your mind's eye. It's not going to happen. On video, it won't be that. But your approach, I mean, feel this, okay? Go for it. And finish, finish, instead of finishing like this, finish like down here. Yeah, but, but okay, go ahead. Lower. Now imagine you're aiming this direction. Go ahead, swing. Go ahead. Again. Okay, that was kind of over here. Imagine you're hitting that direction. Go. <laughs> you killed somebody. See, now you're generating... <sighs> that looks professional. You see how you used to think about your swing was so different? Yeah. Okay? But see, that was your knowledge. Telling you, when you go home and you sit at your bed or you know, over your swing over your bed and you go, okay, I gotta do and then, you, and then you start from this because this is all you know or whatever it is <laughs> this is like the worst thing you can do but the crazy thing is is this is actually something you have to teach young, young kids to teach them how to get an, this kind of an angle with their bat because you use it at times but it's not the swing it's just some it, it's an aspect of something you need to know so it's kind of important in some ways but if if, if, if you don't see the big picture, you'll take it to its extreme and think that's hitting and it's not, okay? Okay, now I want you to think of it again and think of, go do the same thing, but what, what you get to do this time is you get to add a little bit of weight and I want you to think about doing the same swing. I want you to take, without any weight, I want you to take those same swings kind of down, right? And then... When I tell you, then go ahead and swing, but go ahead and add a little weight and imagine compressing this, that it took 8,000 pounds to compress it in this direction, okay? So go ahead and take, take three, three swings in this direction first without a transfer. Again. Okay, now compress it down here with the shift. <sighs> that ball's going to go. <laughs> compress it. Press it. Okay, now keep sideways just like you are. Stride sideways and l lean on it and compress it. I Go for it. I 
I just gave you permission to just hit the crap out of it. <laughs> That's all it is. You just needed permission. Because you've been told you had to do it a certain way or that certain things are important. And so you don't have permission to do it any other way. You know? You see what's happening right here? Very quickly? Yeah. What I was telling you, you know, Rick, that it's quick. If you can see exactly what someone needs and then give them, like I said, I have hundreds of drills. I pull them out of my rear end, depending on the player, because I just understand it. I, you know, but if you, so if you understand it, you can, you can really apply it. Okay, good. Don't try to be so sharp with it. Yeah. Don't try to be so sharp with it. Just keep it square. Just keep it, keep it, yeah, keep it square. Don't worry about being like that sharp. Just keep it square. Because watch me. Watch. Square still. Look at that. Look, look at how inside out I am. Yeah. And I'm, I didn't have to go like that. Yeah. Okay, grab your bat. Okay? Because this is the scary part. Here it is. Assholes and elbows. And if you're going starting somewhere in the assholes and elbows, that's why guys can't hit. Because they start at a different time. Even before their timing mechanism, your internal timing mechanism can only synchronize the speed of the pitch when the ball is in the air. And timing is a distance. Timing is the distance from release to contact. And if the distance from release or from where you start to contact is different every time. You start here one time, 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 there one time. The distance is all, so the time it takes to get there. So now you're, you're trying to synchronize something that's going to change. But if it's always there, there to here... It's always the same, so within a matter of, uh, of tosses here, you're going to get it. So within a matter of tosses, you're going to be synchronized so well. Okay, cross your face, though. Really lose the ball. Good. Now, now you, you lifted your foot before release still. I, 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 I'd rather you do lift without lifting. Watch. See, there's no weight on this. Just don't let it get off the ground. You've never hit a ball that hard, okay? Listen, you're a big, strong, you're a grown man, a strong man. You should be hitting the ball. I took a guy last year hitting the ball 360 to 380 feet. It, within two and a half months, we had him hitting 480. We, we had him hitting 400, over the fence, 400 off of a tee. We gained 80 feet. You have 80 feet in you, okay? You just got to get it to the ball, and you're pretty much, you're... Look, there's not a whole lot complicated. You just feel where you're going. What I would do right now, if you want to help your game, is I would feel contact. Because without knowing, here's a little trick. By just, remember contact is not just this, it's the feel of transfer so you would feel like you don't, you're not quitting, right? So, so stay sideways and just kind of feel contact. Feel it with, there. Okay, so that's where you're going. Look, you can't get somewhere in locked arms. Remember, because you're leaning on it. You want to compress the crap out of this thing, right? And you're leaning on it. Okay, now watch. Now open your toe a little bit when, when you do it. So that's cheating, okay? So now, drop it. Relax it. Now bring it up. No one will even know what you're doing. Drop it. Straighten your arms out. Now drop it. Oh, you just look like a threat. Now that, you can't get somewhere unless you know where you're going. Guess what? No, 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 look, I'm the pitcher, so look at me when you do that. Now, you know where that is, don't you? Do you understand? You have a distance from here to there. Your internal mechanisms can work now. It, well, it works because, yeah, you're starting from release from the same time. And what if you start doing this for weeks and months and you're in the dugout? And so we have a drill that snap Joe. Remember when we did the drill and everybody lined up on the sides and I threw and everyone went release and go? Yeah. Well, and you, everybody who throws on a baseball field, you should go every time a guy throws a ball, okay, ground ball is short, comes up, crow hop. It's like you're not, like I'm not thinking snap, I just snap, like it's music. Yeah. Here, sna snap to my release. That was late, wasn't it? Just don't try to, just get ready. Don't try to snap, just snap at release. Same, same with you, Scott. Just don't try, it's like music. Snapping to the beat of a song. 
little early. Yeah, okay, that's it. Again. There, now it's on, okay? Now, again. I can't even trick you because at some point I have to commit and then, and then I got you. Pretty so, so you're sitting in the dugout going, so let me just tell you a quick story. I took one of our, our number three hitter, our, one of our, our best hitters who was in the worst slump of his life, and he was starting the wrong time, getting strung out, right? So he's sitting in the dugout out with hands like this, and I'm standing out, and it was about a half hour before the game. And he was just like, I don't even want to warm up or anything. So we go, kid, do what? And I go, he's probably wondering what the heck I was doing, right? I said, come on up here. By the corner of my eye, I'm snapping every time our pitcher who's warming up, I'm snapping my finger at release. So he's walking up. He comes up. I said, do you know what I'm doing? Because he, he's snapping your finger. I go, turn this way. What am I doing? He goes, oh. And without me asking him to, he goes, you're, sna he goes, you're snapping your fingers. And we were just like, perfect. It was, it was kind of neat. Right? And so we just started walking down there. I go, just walk with me. We were walking down the walking down to the bullpen. Pretty neat, you know. And we get down there, he's a righty, I'm a lefty, and I said, and then the guy, hey, hey, do you mind if we stand in? We're like five feet. Sure, no problem. So I go, just keep snapping, but kind of watch me too. Release. Release. And, and, and literally, on the first one he did, he goes, I got him. I got him. I, I get this. He goes, oh my gosh, why didn't you tell me this weeks ago? But, you know, the point is, is that when you play catch, guess what? I'm not asking you to do anything that you don't do in, in, in playing catch. You stand there and you talk to your buddy and you go, release. You feel release. How many times have you tried to look for a release point? And that's almost the worst thing you could do. Because if you look for release, you're looking for where, not when. Your brain already knows where. You, you see a guy throw one ball in your mind, your automatic, your, your subconscious already kind of knows where it is. And if you know when, your eyes will go, your soft focus, you'll just go, pow, because it knows when. But if, if you're just kind of there and, and, and all of a sudden it surprises you, you're not even going to see it. You won't pick it up for 10 feet, okay? Okay, so a little lesson there. So you see how this runs into game action tomorrow? <laughs> now you waited. Don't wait, man. Break inertia. Ride. What, you know, while I'm right here, that's like right here. You know, just, just, just look. But just don't lift up your foot. Go like this. Start going. And that's why you practice this. You practice walking around the clubhouse like this. See how long you can ride. Okay. Don't go back though. It's forward only. See, I didn't even mind you letting go because you finished so flat. Okay, that's good. <laughs> you can see a half hour earlier when he began his swing, he had a slow bat. If anyone were to look at him, they'd pretty much write off the bat speed right there. But after 30 minutes, swinging on a plane of your core like professionals do they swing in the same direction of their core and you can see you can see Brandon here all of a sudden changing his his thinking his approach you can see his bass speed jump up 20 miles an hour just by staying on the plane of his core motor